Hey everyone, so we're going to talk about a topic today that I get asked about a lot, and I get asked a lot about it on in multiple realms, as a rabbi, as a life coach, as a chaplain, as a marriage counselor, as a grief counselor, and in all of these areas, we have some some concept that is underlying in all of them and will help all of us to improve our human relationships a little bit more. And so often I'm, I'm asked, how can I be supportive of another person? How can I be there for another person? How can I help someone through emotional validation and through active listening? And these are incredibly important skills. These are skills that some people have naturally, and that, that is a skill. You think to yourself, well, just being a listening person, just being a supportive person, that's not really a talent. It's not something I can do. It's not like juggling or, or, or something else. Mm-hmm. But we have, to, we have to be honest with ourselves that the idea of being someone who is a good listener is an incredible skill that is worth developing and um, for those who don't have it naturally, should uh, make an opportunity, it would be advisable uh, to enhance your relationships with other people in a variety of areas to be able to uh, develop these skills uh, and ideas. And so this will only in help this will only help your relationships in your life, friendships, your marriage, this will help your your uh, your life, your your professional life, and so being able to be a supportive person, an emotionally validating person, a good listener, these are the skills that we're going to talk about today and really will enhance a person's life if they take these ideas to heart. So um, that's where we're going today. Hope you hope you have fun with us. Okay, so here we go. First of all, let's let's talk about the idea of the human being. The human being, in general, it has, was created with many needs. Every human being was created. We are multifaceted beings. We have our physical self. We have an emotional self. We have an intellectual self. We have a spiritual self. We have many areas. We have many realms of what makes us us. So the physical needs that every human being needs is a need for food and a need for water and a need for shelter, right? These are very common, commonly known basic needs that every human being has, physical needs in order to survive properly. Uh, the same thing holds true in the realm of emotion. We have emotional needs. A human being has emotional needs, the need for love, to, to feel love, to give love, uh, to, to have attention, to have someone validate their existence, uh, to have to be socializing. We are social creatures. The Rambam, the famed medieval sage Maimonides, says that the human being is, an, is a Medini, is a, is a social creature. And so when we don't have a socializing aspect, when we are, we are, when we are deprived of that need that we have, it's, it can be damaging. We have to remember that all of the emotional needs that we have the need for love, to give love, to feel love, uh, to to feel that we've gotten attention, that we have emotional validation of our feelings. The, these are very important things, and they are just as real as physical needs, and it can be just as damaging as physical needs if they're neglected. So sometimes, you know, we want to push off the emotional aspect of ourselves and say, well, as long as I have everything that I need, physically that I'm that I'm doing okay and it doesn't it doesn't work like that human being is a multifaceted creature we need all of the all of the above things and so we're going to focus in on the emotional aspect of the person today but the emotional aspect the emotional needs that a person have are just as real as the physical and they are just as damaging as the physical if they are neglected imagine a person imagine a kid imagine back when you were a kid doing something, a great accomplishment, and having no one to share it with, right? You come home with a report card full full of A's or a straight A report card. You come home and there's no one to share it with. Now, that would that would kind of eradicate some of the the feeling of accomplishment that you have. Not all, not, I'm not saying that the reason that we do mm-hmm. things 
is because of the, that we're trying to impress other people, but there is a certain amount of self-validation that comes with the accomplishment, being able to share that accomplishment with other people. Obviously, not in a in a way that's that you're bragging and you're trying to show so much attention to yourself, but there is a certain amount of self-fulfillment and and, and emotional validation that comes with being able to share your accomplishment with others, right? The kid that comes home with the straight A with the straight A report card and no one is home to to what to to see what he did, it, it will 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 be someone who is negatively affected. Okay, and the truth of the matter is that all truths that we have in life all begin in the Torah. The Torah is the ultimate sense of truth, it's the ultimate litmus test, it's the ultimate guiding force of truth. And so whenever we want to recognize the truth of something, we have to see how it's discussed in the Torah context. And so the Torah actually gives a tremendous amount of credence to the idea of emotional validation, the importance of having that emotional satisfaction, emotional validation. One of the one of the places that we find that interesting law uh, for all of you to know, that in in the laws of Hachnasus Orchim, of welcoming guests, so there are there are parameters that go into the idea of welcoming a guest, and there are things that you're supposed to do for your guest, and and ways that you're supposed to treat them. And when you do so, you fulfill the mitzvah. Now, there, in order to fulfill the commandment, there are certain criteria that have to be met in order to actually have done the mitzvah properly, to perform the, the commandment properly. And when is it, when is it, when you have a guest, when is it, when is sort of the highlight of when your achievement of hachnas as archim, of, of welcoming a guest, when has that been achieved? Is it the amount of food that you put on his plate? Is the amount of pillows you give him to sleep him in his bed? In his bed? When does the mitzvah, when does the command, when does your obligation of Hachnas Archim really, be, when does it become fulfilled? And the answer is, the answer that's discussed in Jewish texts is when you escort your guest out. When it's time for him to leave and you escort the guest to the door, and open the door and, and, and escort him as he as he leaves his, as he leaves your home. That is the ultimate. That is where where the mitzvah, the commandment of welcoming guests, has been underscored. And what's the idea behind it? Because your idea of, of escorting him, of honoring him in that way, not just all right, bye, see you later, thanks for coming, but by actually escorting him, you're showing him honor. You're being emotionally validating to his existence. And that is where the mitzvah is. The mitzvah resides. The command resides. The obligation resides. The fulfillment of this godly act of welcoming guests comes when you show them honor. When you well, when you emotionally validate their existence. You show them that they are important to you. In, in your eyes, they have importance to you. It's not the amount of chicken that you put on their plate. It's not the amount of pillows. That, those are important, but the real important part is the honor that you show them, uh, in particular, as they are leaving. There's an interesting uh, law in the laws of tzedakah. So there are, in the parameters of what, is, what, are, what, are the, what are the what are the best kinds of tzedakah, the best kinds of charity, uh, less less best, right? There, there's, there are gradations of what's considered the best and uh, type of charity and what's what's considered secondary and, and, and whatnot. And the highest form of charity in the laws of charity is, you guessed it, giving someone a job, right? finding a job for somebody. Why? You think to yourself, well, you know, it's, what it, what, so it's better to find someone a job where they're making $15 an hour than to give somebody $20. You think to yourself, well, what, that doesn't make sense. I'm giving them $20. That, that's more money than they're going to make in the hour of work. And the idea behind it is because not when you find somebody a job, not only are you providing them with the means of physical support, but you're also giving them the emotional validation that comes through work. When a person works, 
They feel a certain sense of accomplishment. They are emotionally validated by their contribution to whatever task it is that they were working on. And so it's not only the quantity of the money that is important, it is the emotional validation that comes along with it. You've made the person feel useful. You've made them feel needed. You've made them feel that they're contributing, and they are contributing. And so it's through the job, it's through the finding of the job that's considered the highest form of tzedakah because it's not only a way of them getting physical sustenance, right, physical money to pay for the things that they want, but it's also the emotional satisfaction of a job well done that comes with it. Another area that we see the significance of emotional validation and uh, the importance of Having that and, and, and the importance of our emotions is when, when the Jews are enslaved in Egypt, the Israelites are enslaved in the land, the land of Egypt, it, the Jewish tradition calls their slavery avoidas perach, that, the, that the, the labor that they did was, had, no, had no sense of accomplishment to it. One of the things that they did, they did useless work. One of the things that that is said in, in, in Torah tradition that the Egyptians would have the, the Israelites build massive monuments and cities and whatnot, and then they'd have them tear it down. Like, build something up, make this big project, and then destroy it. And so what, the, the reason that it calls that avoidas perach, right, this, this uh, unsatisfying, uh, unsatisfying work, uh, non-accomplishing work, is because that no matter it wasn't about the work labor that went into it. Why was it considered so so terrible? The work labor that went into it, their slavery, was because not not because of the amount of work, the amount of sweat beads that came beating off their head. The real the real challenge, the real uh, distressing part was the point was was the idea that it was pointless work. They couldn't even have the emotional satisfaction. Listen, if you invest a lot of your time into something, at least you feel, right, at the end of the day, it's, like, it's, not, it's not an ideal situation to begin with, but at least you have the sense of, wow, look what I built. I built this whole city. I helped build this entire city. But when you build a whole city and then you destroy it, it's like you're working on the Mona Lisa and then you just decide you're going to rip it up. So the, the detriment, the, the real effect of, of really why it was such terrible labor in Egypt was because it was pointless labor. They couldn't even have the emotional satisfaction of saying, wow, look what I built. And so we see time and again throughout Torah tradition the value that's placed on emotional validation, on emotional support, the emotion, on emotional needs being met. And one of the emotional needs that we have in our validation, in our, in our interaction with others, is the need to feel accepted and accept, being accepting of others. Another area that we have to really focus on that would be very beneficial for all of us to sort of tweak is our communication skills, is being not only communicating your own feelings, but being a better uh, receptacle for or being being a better receiver for the uh, for other people's feelings having something called active listening the communication is an extraordinarily a real effective good communication is something that is so necessary so important for the human condition now one of the things that's that, that's kind of interesting if you think about it is is that these days interesting and, and, and sad in, a, in, a, in an ironic sense, these days, if you look around, there has never been in human history more ways in which people can communicate with each other. There's never been more opportunities for people to uh, engage and interact. We have social media, we have cell phones, we have video, right? We have FaceTime where we can literally talk to someone anywhere across the world face to face at any time. Yet at the same time, I don't know that there's ever been a time in human history where we've been more disjointed, where we've been more disconnected. And so you look around and we have all of the mechanisms, all of the trimmings to, to facilitate good communication. And we have 
uh, probably the least amount of communication, real communication, going on. And this this, this hints at a, a, a an idea that has that has been expressed in other ways before that just because you have a lot of something doesn't mean that you have it in a good way. In other words, a person can be full, you can be full physically, but also be malnourished. And you can be an you could be someone who overeats and also malnourished. You're not getting what you need. You have a lot of it, but you're not getting what you need. So I'd like to really focus in today on being a better listener and that way being of support to others. And when you do that to others, people are also more likely and more willing to do it to you. It's a reflexive, it's a reflexive relationship. But let's work on today uh, the idea of being a good listener. And one of, the, one, of the, one of the places that people fall short, one of the reasons that people fall short in this is because most people don't listen to another person with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. It's not that I'm trying to understand you and understand where you're coming from. The idea is I'm trying to figure out already what I'm going to say back to you. And that doesn't mean I'm trying to, to refute what you say, right, depending on the conversation. But it just means that I'm thinking more about me and my, what my response is going to be to your words than listening to what your words are on their own merit. It says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 13, it says, He who responds before listening, it is folly and an embarrassment for him. And the idea is, and this is something that's conveyed all over to our, to our context, is that when you listen, when a person listens, they're meant to, they're meant to do it in an active sense. One of the, one of the, one of the things that has been embedded in, in my mind, through various trainings over the year, first as a hospice chaplain when counseling families, then later in, in my explorations of becoming a cognitive behavioral therapy uh, practitioner, and, and recently in, in going into the, the ins and outs of being a certified clinical trauma specialist. The way in which you gain insight into another person, the way in which you help somebody the most, is allowing them the opportunity to speak emotionally uh, what they're feeling. That you are listening, not only listening like you're there present, that you're in the room with them, but that they feel, because you actually are, listening in an active sort of way. We all go through our days and are engaging in conversations with friends and with coworkers and, and, and family members and, and all sorts of people. But most of the time, we don't listen very well. We don't listen as well as we could or sometimes as well as we, as we should. We're often distracted by other things that we're doing in the environment, whether that's the television, whether that's the internet, whether that's our smartphone. How many times will you be talking to somebody and they'll be looking at a smartphone, responding to a text, uh, responding to something, and doing something on their phone and give you that sort of like half, half listening? It's, it's, it's not only rude, it's, it's detrimental to the idea of positive communication and positive listening. And so we think we're listening. We tell ourselves that we're listening. Meanwhile, we have the phone in our hand or we're watching TV or whatever it is. We think we're listening, but we're really not giving them our full attention. And so having these skills of giving another person your full attention and having what we call active listening will be something that improves all of your relationships across the board. Again, this is friendships. This is marital relationships. This is business, your, your, your employees, your employer, your friends, any, whatever it is across the board, this will be helpful in enhancing your relationships, I guarantee you. Okay, And so there's a skill, it's actually a skill called active listening, right? where, we, where we actively, active listening is about building rapport, it's about understanding, it's about establishing trust. And by learning the skills that we're going to talk about as we continue today, you're going to become a better listener and actually hear what the other person is saying, not just what you think that they're saying or what you want to hear. Okay, so these are skills that we all need to work on to, to, be, 
to, to get better at it. They're not always things that are natural to people. And it's a proven psychological techniques that helps people talk all of the things that we're going to go over today. Okay? It helps a person feel free to continue talking, even if the person that they're talking to, namely you in this, in this instance, may, even if you don't have all that much to say or offer the other person, right, other than your ear. A lot of times when, when people are, are trying to be supportive of other people, in particular when it comes to grief, they say, well, I don't even know what to say. Well, sometimes it's not about what you say, it's how you listen that's going to be effective in helping the other person. Not just that you're there, not just, oh, you have my ear while I'm ticking away at my smartphone. It's how engaged are you going to be in your listening? And this is something that the other person can feel. This is something that can go a long way if done properly. So the question that I'm going to and I'm going to ask, and then I'm gonna, we're going to go through th some skills as to how to improve, is: Are you as good a listener as you think that you are? Are you as good a listener as you think you are? So let's let's break it down and offer some tips. Okay, sound like fun? If it, if if so far so good, give a thumbs up. Give a share, right? Help spread this to the world, right? Communication in this in this particular way, social media is not an ideal form of communication. It's not. It doesn't have the same emotional impact. However, it is what we have, and if we can use it for positive purposes, all the better. Okay. So the question is: Are you as good a listener as you think you are? And we're going to break it down and offer some tips. So the if, if you're if you even do just a few of these, you don't even have to do all of these. If you do just a few of these, you're going to find yourself listening and hearing more of what another person is saying to you. Okay, So here are some skills that you can kind of think about that will be very helpful in your listening skills. Number one would be restating what the person is, is saying. Repeat every so often, not every word, but every, every so often, repeat what you think the person said. Not, not by parroting, not just by repeating and uh, you know, telling them exactly what it is, but by paraphrasing what you heard in your own words. So, for example, you say, Let, "Let's see if I'm clear about this," you know, and then and then go into what they uh, a paraphrased version of what they said. Right? That shows that you're listening, and it shows that you that you care, that you're engaged, and that that's an important thing. So, restating would be one thing, one area uh, to to focus in on. Summarizing, right? A similar idea would be summarizing, right? Bring together the facts that have been discussed. Uh, bring back the pieces of the problem to check your understanding. So for example, it, you say like, it sounds to me like blank, right? Or uh, something, something along those lines. Uh, another important area, another, another area where you may uh, uh, or, or it might be helpful in, in the impact of your listening, the impact of your conversation in that area would be uh, having minimal encouragers. So you, in other words, this is brief, positive prompts to keep the conversation going and showing that you're listening. So for example, if you say, I, I understand, right? Now, and, and again, you have to mean it. You have to actually, okay, I understand. Uh, or you say, then... Um, and then what? You know, things things that are short, concise, uh, show that you're listening, show that you're engaged, and promote the person to share further. Okay, very interesting and very necessary part of this whole package. Um, another area that would be useful is the idea of reflecting. So reflecting, instead of just repeating what the person said and kind of giving it back to them, reflect the speaker's words in terms of feelings. So for example, you say, this seems really important to you. Okay, that, that way you're, you're taking what they said and you're rephrasing it and you're reflecting how it sounds to them. That sounds like something that bothers you. That sounds like something very challenging for you. That sounds like something that made you very happy. Whatever it is, you're taking their emotion. You're taking the the words in which they've spoken to you, and you've translated it into an emotion. You've pinpointed an emotion that can that that you can express it like that, and it shows not only that you're listening, but you're validating the feeling that is being conveyed in the topic that they're talking about. 
Uh, another another example, another idea would be giving feedback, right? Let the person know uh, what your initial thoughts are on, on this situation. Uh, share pertinent information or observations or insights, uh, experiences. Then listen carefully to confirm what's being talked about. Uh, then uh, another area, another another tip would be what's called emotional labeling, where we put feelings into words. Putting feelings into words will often help a person to see things more objectively. To help the person, uh, to help the person begin, you can use door opener questions. So, for example, you say, "I'm sensing that you're feeling frustrated. I'm sensing that you're feeling worried. I'm sensing that you're feeling anxious." And this will be something that invites uh, the person to share further about what it is that they are sharing about. Uh, another area that is possible uh, that is that is a as a good route to improve upon to help rapport and help uh, shape the conversation to have true conversations and be a good listener are probing questions not 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 tr not not in the way that probing is sometimes defined but probing questions meaning ask a question to draw the person out and get deeper and more meaningful information. So, for example, what do you think would happen if you blank? Okay, this is again validating what this is. It's validating what the person has said thus far, but also trying to allow them to feel free to continue speaking further about what it is that was bothering them. Uh, the, val the validation aspect is, is an important thing that you can actively do. You can actively validate when having these types of conversations. Right? Acknowledge the person's problems, their issues, their feelings. Listen openly and with empathy and respond in an interested type of way. So, for example, I appreciate your willingness to talk about such a difficult issue for you. That's a validating not only the issue that they're going through, but you're, you're showing that you appreciate them sort of trusting you. And that is a big thing, that, that, you trust, that they are trusting you to listen and to look in an, in an objective way and in a supportive way. That's not something that someone just willy-nilly willy gives to everybody. And so you should validate that and, and uh, assure them of, reassure them that you acknowledge that, you appreciate it, and uh, that they can feel safe with you. Uh, there's also the technique of the, effect, the effective pause, where, where you deliberately pause at key points for emphasis. So this will tell the person that you're saying something that's very important to them, right? And that, that, that comes just with the, the length of the pause. When, you, when you're going to say something that they need to hear, you kind of preface it with something, and then you have an effective pause where the person sort of is tuning in extra to what you're about to say. Um, there, there's also a value in comfortable silence. When you're having a, it, the conversation, doesn't have to be a constant back and forth where they tell you what they're what they're struggling with, or they they're telling you something about their emotions, and you're uh, listening and providing feedback right away. Comfortable silence is also something that's valuable. It slows down the exchange, but it's something that gives each person a time to reflect, gives a person to think uh, think uh, as well as talk as to what. You know what's uh, what's actually going on in the conversation. If you see that a person is is flustered or uh, being overly aggressive or agitated or angry yeah, in, in any conversation, one one way to sort of uh, channel that would be to redirect it temporarily, to redirect to shift the discussion to another topic uh, for the time being. Uh, what what are some of the blockers that are typically that that often come up uh, in effective communication. Mm -hmm. When, In order to have a, a, an effective conversation with somebody in a, in a true conversation type of way, uh, meaning talking about the real stuff, when stuff gets real, uh, what are some of the things that are often roadblocks to effective communication? So let's talk about some of them. So one of them are why questions. When, the, when you ask somebody too many why questions, they tend, they t why questions tend to make people defensive. So you should take note of that. It's a good idea to take note of that, that um, asking too many why questions. Why questions in general have the, have the mm -hmm. effect of sometimes making people feel 
defensive. Um, another is being too quick to re- be to have reassurance. Right? Reassurance is a very important thing, but being too quick with it is actually counterproductive. So saying that if somebody says something and they're sharing with you something that is important to them or something that they're struggling with and you just say, Oh, don't worry about it. I mean, that's the words that you're saying are reassuring. Okay, don't worry about it. But being too quick to reassure shows that you're not really listening. You're not really listening to the emotion behind what the words that they're saying are. Um, another thing is advising. Uh, I, I, to, to give too much advice can be, unless they ask you for advice, or unless you, they are saying words that suggest that they want your advice, the advice giving can be actually counterproductive in the in a conversation. Uh, digging for information can also be counterproductive. It's a roadblock. Uh, w- when you dig for information, you're sort of forcing another person to talk about something that they may not want to talk about or maybe not want to talk about right now. But the idea of digging for information uh, that is r- relevant or ir- irrelevant is is not something that uh, that oftentimes is productive in being a good emotional support, in being a good listener, in being someone who has good validation skills. Uh, also, not to patronize the person. Not right. You poor thing. I, I know. I know just how you feel. You don't know how they feel. Everyone feels differently. Everyone reacts to things differently. And to automatically go to suggest that you know how somebody feels because you had a situation or, or something similar happened to you, that, that can be something that builds rapport. But oftentimes, it's, it doesn't allow the person to have the validation that they need. Like right now, we're talking about that person, right? Letting that person express their. So if somebody says, well, such and such happened to me, and we go right into, well, such and such happened to me too, right? Or something, either the same thing happened or something even worse happened to me, right? So, so you shouldn't feel bad because look what happened to me. No, 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 please no. Give them the opportunity to share their their feeling about it. And even if something happened to you that was the same or even worse in your eyes. You don't know how people process things. You don't know how, you don't know how much of a struggle and how, how how difficult something is for somebody else. Maybe maybe you maybe you dealt with it and it, maybe it's easier for you to deal with. Maybe it's harder for them. So you don't know what they're going through because you don't you don't no one no two people experience the same thing in the same way. So stop. Unless they ask you, you know, I know that you went through a similar thing. How did how did you how did you get through it? Ah, now you can share it. But to, to overly emphasize what you went through, it's about you. Don't you don't make it about you. It's about them. Give them that opportunity. Also, preaching. Preaching is never an effective way to communicate, <laughs> ever. As many of you know. Right? Preaching. You should dot dot dot. Or you shouldn't dot dot dot. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> it's not effective. It's not effective for anybody. Interrupting, for sure not. Right? That shows that you're not interested in what the other person is saying. Right? It's only about me. It's only about what I have to say. So these are very valuable tools that are, uh, you know, eff- effective in relationship building and effective in giving others and yourself the emotional validation that we all need. Uh, again, the Torah emphasizes tremendously the point that our emotional needs and our spiritual needs are as important as our physical needs. And just because we tend to play extra, to pay extra attention to our physical needs, doesn't mean that our emotional and spiritual needs are any less important and, and play any less a role in our overall well-being. In fact, to the contrary, oftentimes these are the things that are, are providing us the most sense of well-being. Many people have a lot of things that they need in the physical realm, but are lacking tremendously in the emotional and not to mention the spiritual. And so with doing this, and not only is, not only is doing this going to allow you to be a better communicator, with people and allow people to have, allow you to have better relationships with everyone in your life by having effective listening skills with your kids, with your friends, with your spouse, with your boss, 
everybody. This will literally help every relationship that you have if you're a good listener. Um, not only will you be affecting and enhancing all of the relationships in your life, but you'll also uh, be granting other people the emotional health mm -hmm. that they need. You'll be also helping to facilitate. In the same way that it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to go to a soup kitchen and give food to those that need, uh, it's also an important thing to be able to go to other people and give them the emotional validation, give them the listening that they need, the reassurance that they need, the support that they need in order to have their own sense of well-being as well. So uh, I will leave you with that for today. God willing, we will talk again very soon about the Torah's endless knowledge on every aspect of our life, every area of our life. I look forward to doing with all of you very soon. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see each other very soon, God willing.